and they hit each other and it ruined it. So there's nothing you can do. You just put it aside, go buy a new eBay hard drive and start all over again before you ruin it. This is what the ramp looks like on some of the drives that are out there. The ramp itself will help you line that up and you can get that right back on and once it's there, you're good. But take your time and make sure you look to make sure that they're mounted on there correctly or you'll end up, the second that you start up the drive, it will hit the edge of the platter as it starts to move back onto the drive. And once you've done that, you've just got metal scraping all the way across the platter because it doesn't know the heads aren't there anymore. So that'd be it for the drive. This one I think is possible. This is one that I actually did a head replacement and I did the same exact thing and because it has ramps, it doesn't matter that there's four heads there. It took me a little bit more time, but I got it done. This one is also possible. What you would use for your tools here is tweezers. Tweezers expand out. So you can bend them just right so that you can try to hold them around this, but it's a little bit like operation. You've got to try to make sure that you do not touch your platter when you're putting them back on. But these heads park in the middle and there's no outside ramp. So you've got to be extremely cautious with that while you're reassembling that trying to get it back on. This one I would say is not possible. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is where you pray. Because you're not going to get that data back. That's a SCSI, nine, nine platter, 16 heads. That's not going to happen. So looking at platter damage, this is what it would look like. And before you start buying parts, this would be one of the first things I say to do is to go ahead and take a quick look at the inside of the drive and make sure that you don't see the silver on the platter sliding off or you don't see anything on the pillow because if it's on that little pillow on the filter, then it's underneath and you won't be able to see it. It might not be the top one. But once it's already done this, it's too late. And this is what it looks like. Now this is a glass platter, has a little bit of ceramics in it. This is from an IBM drive. In the pictures on the, on the disc, you'll be able to see a little bit better, but you can actually see right through this hard drive. You can actually see the metal underneath it on the bottom. Both heads on both sides ate the oxide, ate the thin, thin film right off of it and destroyed the drive. This is another one where the heads hit it and there's a checkerboard pattern across it. That's impossible. You're not gonna be able to do anything with that one either. And when you get one, like I described earlier, where the head actually falls off or hangs off, it'll start writing these little S's all over the place and eventually you'll get grooves all the way around and you can just have to tell your grandma that she's not going to get her pictures back. So your motor failure, this one, it may actually move, it may not, but here's a good indication of when your motor isn't working properly and it's not spinning up as fast as it should. The plastic piece over here, if the motor doesn't reach its maximum velocity, that little plastic piece will not teeter out of the way. So if you want to take off the top, look at the hard drive and power it up, if that plastic piece doesn't move, your motor is not working correctly. So you may be able to move a single platter to another system. When you disassemble it, this is the spindle piece right here. You cannot take this out. It is manufactured to be exactly in the right spot. If you take that out, I doubt seriously you'll ever get it back together correctly enough that it will move. But in this particular case, the two platters, as you can see, have nothing on them. They are just pieces of glass and they have a little ring that sits in the middle, which is on top of that screwed together. And that's all that's holding it together. There's nothing to keep them aligned. So this would be the reason that you could not move two platters to another drive. It'd be easier to move the heads than it would the platters. So if the motor is frozen, that's a problem. The way you tell if the motor is frozen is if when you open it up, you take a screwdriver and you put it at the edge of the, of the spindle right here, you can actually spin it. Then it's spinning freely. You're in good shape. You could probably replace the board on the bottom and it will probably work most of the time. This is why it looks like that through the cylinder. The cylinder actually cuts through the disc and you will not be able to realign that information again. And so the, your chances are gone at that point.